Hey guys, so we're gonna pick up where I left off in the last video for the most part. I've done a little bit of cleaning, but beyond that I haven't actually done any work on this thing. So it was working. I replaced the fuses. That seemed to be all it needed. Um, it's still working. I went ahead and tested all the buttons and everything. It's kind of a pain in the ass to use when it's just a bare motherboard, you know, but it does work. Everything's happy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to get it assembled with the parts that I have. Now, this is what it came with. The astute among you might notice that I'm missing quite a few things. So as far as buttons go, I have the two shoulder buttons, A and B, and then the membrane for A and B. That's it. I don't have D-pad, I don't have start select, I don't have the power slider, volume, um, probably something else I'm forgetting, but whatever. I do have the card reader shield, and I do have the full aluminum and plastic frame assembly here. I am missing the battery cover, but whatever. Uh, and I do have a faceplate. Uh, it did come with a battery, uh, but this is it. You're looking at everything that it came with. Uh, so I did go ahead and order some parts here, and I'm pretty happy with this, but I found there's a vendor on AliExpress that sells a screw kit for entirely too much, but it is what it is. Um, I also found the same vendor sells the membranes and some buttons here. Now, the screw kit and the membranes, they look mostly original. Of course, I know they're aftermarket, but, you know, they look original. These, on the other hand, don't even look close to original. They're this, like, clear bluish color, but I think we should be good. I think everything should work, and I haven't decided if for the final build I'm going to use these L and R buttons and these these buttons that it came with. Um, but for now I'm going to go ahead and use the aftermarket buttons just so we can give them a shake. Because even though I'm putting this together now I still got to take it apart again at some point. But so this came with all of the buttons here. Uh, there's L, start select, or excuse me, I don't know what button that is. I don't know if that's start or select. I don't know if I think they're the same, but they're not labeled on these ones. Uh, a, B, there's R, the D-pad, the volume rocker, and the power switch here. Now, most of these buttons, forgive me, the lighting kind of sucks, but there's some leftover junk from molding, I guess, that'll need to be trimmed off, but that's, that's pretty easy, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the only other issue is this one didn't come with a speaker. Now, I did check. You can't really get speakers in the right size with the right specs. I don't... If you can, I can't find them. Um, and this... The Game Boy Micro uses speakers kind of like an SP where it just has the two spring contacts and then it makes pressure when you assemble it. That completes the circuit and that's what holds the speaker in. I couldn't find that. I could find this, which has some wires. This is, I think, like a 13 millimeter speaker, whereas the original is 14 millimeters, or something like that. This is one millimeter smaller than the original. And this does work. I've, I've tested this out. Uh, the volume on this is up, and I'll go ahead and try and touch the contacts. And you might have to take my word for it. You probably can't hear that. Micros aren't very loud to begin with, and with all this background noise, you know, imagine it can't be, <laughs> can't be that great. Uh, I do also have this little cutout of a mesh that I plan on putting over it, just so that it looks a little bit better once everything's assembled. On a regular micro, they have that mesh already in there. And I do have this micro. I've started taking it apart. I didn't get very far. I just took the faceplate off, the battery cover, and the battery. I, just so I have this if I need to take it apart as a guide to put this together because I don't do these very often. I'm a little bit rusty. I also have the iFixit guide on my laptop over here just in case to help me out. But 
First thing, I'm going to start off by getting the speaker in. I'm going to turn this off so I don't fuck anything up and remove the battery. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and trim these wires down. And again, I'd really love to not solder to this to just get the right speaker from the get-go, but I, I can't. I don't know. Um, as far as I can tell, the only place to get a speaker is from another micro, so that's not going to do me too much good. I hate soldering to these gold contacts because you can't ever really remove the solder once you cover the gold. That's kind of it. But the alternative is no speaker, so I think we're going to be okay. And I'm sorry if I'm off frame there. I'm just going to go ahead and tin these contacts. And in this case, it really, the polarity doesn't really matter too much, but it just so happens that, let me clean that off, just so happens that with how the speaker is positioned, the polarity works out nicely. Okay. Okay, turn the soldering iron off because hopefully I don't need it anymore. And let's test it out. Ready for this? I'm going to put it up to the camera here. So that's working. That should be good. Turn that off. And then accidentally turn it back on. Okay. So I am a little bit concerned that this wire is going to short on the speed the headphone contact shouldn't be that big of a deal, but fuck if I know. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started here. So last time I took apart a micro, I mentioned to make sure that this goes in the proper way because one side is taller than the other. Um, I didn't realize that it's actually keyed. There's on this corner here, there's a point, whereas the other three insides are rounded. So it does only fit in the one way, but hey, we all make mistakes. Okay. Put in my new membrane here. And, oh, so the buttons are labeled. That's nice has an A on it. And so far those haven't needed any trimming beyond what I just kind of scraped off with my fingernails. But they fit in pretty decent. And I'm going to drop this in there. Feed the screen in. Ooh, 
those feel all right. I'll have to get it more assembled before I can really try out the D-pad, but it ain't bad. Okay. So next, we got to put in I've just resolved I'm going to get fingerprints all over the screen, even though I already cleaned it. So I've got to put this in. Now, I'm not really sure how this goes in. Well, I know how it goes in. I don't know how the ribbon cable is supposed to get folded. Because that doesn't seem right to me. this under. There we go. How's that look? So I think the next step is go ahead and put in the start and select buttons. Let's get these trimmed up if they need it. All right, so that one has a big chunk on the end. Let's see if I can trim it off with my flush cutters. And this one has the same thing. <clears throat> okay. Probably shouldn't have put those away, but whatever. And these look like they're directional, and I don't know which is which. So, feel free to laugh at me. Okay. So, it's probably obvious if you do this a lot, but you see how there's the uh, notch on the lower right hand? or I guess on the top right hand, the uh, sticky outy bit goes on the bottom. It goes in like that. Next, we need... I feel like I'm missing a step, but okay. I guess this goes on now. And this should hold in the uh, buttons there, and the screen, thankfully. Sorry guys for such a riveting video. I think this was supposed to go in first. Cause yeah, because that hinges underneath. I 
Next, we can put in some screws. But I probably want to put in that power switch. And where's the volume rocker go? Oh, it goes in here. We can put that in later. So the power switch also has something that needs to be removed. But it's easy enough. Everything just shifted in the case and that doesn't feel right. This, yeah, this should have gone in first. I can probably uh, fudge it though. No, that's not happening. Give me a sec. I'm going to let the camera cool down and I'm going to put this in. I'll be right back. All right, I didn't get very far because I thought this had to go underneath. I didn't realize that this went on top. So just take the metal shielding off and this drops right in here. And that'll actuate the switch. It's kind of hard to see that it's doing anything, but... Oh, because I don't think it is. <gasps> Ooh, that's a problem. This doesn't work. So the detent is lining up properly, but there's nothing that actually grabs. Oh, never mind. I'm dumb. The uh, motherboard fell out. Let me put that back in. It should work. Just the motherboard is set to off, the switch is set to off. I have the cart reader shielding. Oh, set that back. Ugh. And this should settle down in there. And now I think it's doing something find out, shall we? Yeah, so that's fine. I was overreacting. Alright, next up, once we've got this in, we can actually start putting some screws in, instead of just trying to hold it together and hope for the best. We're going to dump them all out, I don't know what's what. I believe all these black ones go on the outside when all said and done. There's one big one for small ones. That big one might be for the battery cover. And so we have two Phillips screws. We can't see either of them from the outside, so I don't know which is which, unfortunately. We're just going to go ahead and sort these. So, shit. Well, I'm going to assume they're the short ones, because if I assume wrong, that's easier to fix than assuming it's the long ones. Oh, that's why that's not working worth a damn. That wasn't even a Phillips screwdriver. Okay. Why don't you guys stop me and tell me? I put that one on you, that's not me. That was all you. Okay. 
next we need to put on the rear bit of the frame which I assume means we need to do these as well if I recall correctly there's supposed to be some springs that go with these so hopefully we'll be fine without and probably this part yeah this goes in here like that and this is going to be trouble Okay, that wasn't nearly as much of a pain in the ass as I expected. Okay. So now there are two more screws. Again, I'll assume these are the shorties. Nope. Probably not because that one doesn't even reach. Oh, but that one does. So let me try this again. Okay. No, nope, that one doesn't reach. But of course, now I can't get it out. You know, there's an easy way to figure this one out. Yeah, that's a long screw. <laughs> Also, just realized something interesting. Oh, never mind. That's not on the outside. I thought that was on the outside. There's a cutout in the shelf for that. Come on. There we go. Okay, we're making some progress. Pop the rear cover on. Now, I haven't cleaned up any of this yet. In fact, it's even got a nice dent in it. But I think I'll get to that later. So these two should be tri-wing, indeed they are, and there should be three Phillips screws, I'm guessing they should be short ones. So I gotta figure out where the long one goes. I'll bet this one, I can remove that, sorry camera cut out, wasn't paying too much attention. I did get this screw swapped out with a long one, so it looks like the first two screws that go in, those are supposed to be short. The two screws that go in this rear frame, those are supposed to be long. Then you can go ahead and put these, or this part in here. And so you're supposed to have two short and one long screw left. I went ahead and checked my Game Boy Micro here. This one's a long one, those two are short. And you can, I didn't even have to take it out. I did just to verify, but you can tell just from the finish, the color, these two are like, I don't know, kind of a greenish golden. I guess that's a zinc finish, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Whereas that one's the silver finish. So, that being said, let's go ahead and put in this screw which looks like you could have put in before putting this rear shell on. I 
feel like iFixit is in need of a new guide. Because all three of these screws can go in without putting the rear shell on. Maybe I should do something about that. Okay. Next, we have these two biggins. And these ones are the tri wing screws that screw into the front metal bit of the shell. Come on, there we go. So those screw in there. This is what actually holds the metal bits together. And then we just have these ones left. And hopefully I can get these in without making a complete fool of myself, but no promises. Two on the side by the volume rocker in A and B. Ooh, and I already found a problem. The volume rocker doesn't seem to rock. Not a huge problem because, like I said, the volume on the micro is quiet, to say the least. And then two screws on the top there. And then, I would go ahead and pop in my battery and put on my battery cover, but since I don't have one, I'm going to use this black one for now. Oh, I did actually order. You can get battery covers. I did order this. This is the battery cover that I made that video about the other day, about not buying aftermarket micro parts. And yeah, here's why. That didn't even come close to fitting. You can see how much of a gap there is, and that's all the way in. I also complained about how the color didn't match, and apparently the color matches perfectly. I'm just an idiot. But, I mean, really? The color matches? Sure, okay. I'll believe that one. Whatever, I still ended up getting a full refund because it doesn't fit in because of these cracks here, so. I can get this out. Oops. I still don't know what I'm doing about the battery cover yet. I think I have a, a lead on one. Either the person I got this from in the first place or Another one I found on online, perhaps. I don't know. I don't know if the guy was serious. He was just posting his collection of battery covers. I don't know if he just took all of his battery covers off his consoles or if he just genuinely only has battery covers. I think that screw hole is stripped out. Going to make that interesting. Oh well, keep that like that for new. Might as well clean this off. Maybe I'll see if I can get a 3D printed battery cover or something. That's good enough. So, I gotta say, I hate these buttons with this faceplate. That is not a very good looking color. That's weird. I guess this thing needs a clean power switch too. But let me, uh, let me turn that off just so you can get a full appreciation of the 
glowing. I think that's super cool. Too bad they're only ever on when the battery is dead or dying. This L button is super tight too. It's rubbing on something. Maybe even the battery cover. I don't know. I'll have to tweak that some. Yes, yes, I know. This is my original Ruby. I haven't done anything with it in years. Ever since I got Emerald. Ah, so my volume went down because apparently the volume rocker is stuck on down, which is super cool. But I don't think there's much I can do about that until I take it apart again. But there we go. I mean, it works. These buttons are... Okay, A and B and the D-pad. They feel all right. They feel a little bit short. I don't know if that's just the membranes or the buttons themselves, but they feel like they're just kind of sunken down into the console. Like, let me compare that one. I don't know how well you can see that. I don't know. They look pretty much the same on camera. Well, maybe the D-pad's a little bit more noticeable. They're... This faceplate is an OEM faceplate just with a sticker over it. This is an aftermarket faceplate with a sticker over it. But yeah, actually now that I have them both side by side like that, I can... I can see the difference. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but trust me, they are sunken down a little bit. It's still perfectly playable, and to be honest, Oh, that's interesting. On the original Micro, you can't press all four buttons at the same time. It kind of rocks around on a center nub. On this one, you can press all four buttons at the same time. That's probably going to break some games. I know it breaks Link's Awakening DX, but since this can't play Link's Awakening DX, I don't know if that's a big issue. I don't know. I'm going to have to do more tweaking with the buttons there. Clearly, down is working and L is working because it's adjusting my brightness here. I think I just need to shave some uh, plastic off this. But R feels nice. But, yeah. I'm going to take this apart, clean it up once I get a battery cover, because my plan is to get this Cerakoted, and I'm going to do that because i got to sand it down to deal with these scratches up here and right here especially. Um, I'm kind of butthurt that I'm going to lose all this text on the back because under this gunk I'm sure it looks pretty nice, even though it's missing a serial number sticker. but. I suppose that's going to depend entirely on what sort of battery cover I can get my hands on. Let's see if I can bend that back into shape too. Nice thing about a micro is that you can, if, if things aren't lining up, you can just bend it back into shape. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. At least I finally got it assembled, right? Part 3 is coming eventually. Still need to get a battery cover first, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this up and and uh, sand it off camera. But by the time part three comes around, I'll have this nice and painted. Hit me up if you have any suggestions for color. I'm leaning towards purple, but I haven't decided yet. But let me know. I'm open to suggestion. Quick update, I figured out why I was having some trouble with my L button here. Uh, I need to either cut a notch in the frame, which I'm not going to do, or I need to trim the button itself. I don't know how well you can see this. Forgive me, the lighting is freaking terrible. But um, it doesn't help when I hit the damn camera either.
focus in on that. You can see there's this little part that sticks out on the button that doesn't fit under the notch. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut a little bit of that button off. And I think we should be good. Uh, that might also fix my volume problem. I don't know. Uh, in this case, I could file it off. But I think it's easier to just snip. I'll use the file to smooth that out. And now it fits together. It clicks nicely. The uh, volume rocker, I think I'm going to have to I think I'm going to have to sit here and just file it down a little bit, but um, I will do so and I'll give you another update in a couple minutes here. Quite frankly, it'd be easier to file down the buttons, but I'm not going to do that either. I'll be back. Alright, so I went ahead and filed that down and I mean you can see how much it actually moves now, so I think that's going to be good. Let me go ahead and put this back together and let's test it out. So one of the weird things I noticed about the uh, L button when I trimmed it, the, that's my tri-wing, the shape of the, I guess the, the part that I trimmed off, it's the same as it is on stock. It's just, I guess it was a little bit too long. These buttons actually look like someone modeled them up but they got the measurements wrong, as opposed to other buttons that I've seen before that are uh, cast. These actually look like original models or something. Maybe they got, they got that part wrong. Because I just think it's weird that it'd be the exact same shape, but the wrong length. Because if we look at this L button here, this part, you can see at the end, or my thumbnail is, there's that little square bit uh, at the end of the rectangle. The part I trimmed off had that same thing, but now it doesn't have the rectangle, or the square bit. And what am I missing? Uh, now we switch back to the tri -wing. Shit, I'm missing something. <laughs> that was my Discord, by the way, not yours. Just in case you have Discord open while you're watching YouTube. can't help but think at this point in the video, I don't know, what are we, 35, 40 minutes in? How long does it take to put together a freaking Game Boy Micro? I gotta say, not nearly as long as I make it look. But you know how when you... Like, you go to replace a part in your car or something, you look at the YouTube video, the dude does it in, like, five minutes flat, so you know it's going to take you eh, at least 40 minutes. That's how I am. All right, let's wipe that off again, because i got my fingerprints on it. i got to just remove that at some point. Whatever, good enough.
So I'm thinking with these buttons, I'm probably gonna hit up Jelly Belly Customs, see if I can just get some custom cast D-pad and uh, A and B. Then I might just switch back to the Chrome ones for L and R, but I'm definitely liking the clear for start and select. But uh, let's put the game in. So it feels like it's working. There we go. You can hear it clicking. It's all the way up, and there's my game audio. And I can hold L and adjust the brightness now. So yeah, that was both my problems. I just needed to file this down a little bit and I needed to trim that weird bit off of L. And we're good to go. For this micro, I think I'm just gonna put a little bit of double-sided tape to stick the battery down. And I have no idea what I'm gonna do about the battery cover in the meantime. Maybe I'll try and use that shit one that I don't know, I just did something with. Oh, that's right, I put it in the slugs drawer. Remind me when I'm looking for it in a month. And that screw hole is stripped out, so I don't know what to do about that. This is holding in well enough, but I don't like it. Um, but yeah, there we go. Now it's actually working, as you can see. And I'm happy with that. It'd be nice if these buttons were uh, faithful reproductions. I don't know what happened there. But, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta work with what you got, I guess. But in the meantime, yeah, please let me know if you all have any suggestions on color. Because I do plan on using this faceplate. I really dig the these face paints, the Evangelion, Evan, Evangelion, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Of course, I'm fucking it up on video. But so I want to use this faceplate. I want to do this color scheme. That's why I was thinking purple. And uh, so let me know if you think I should get a different color. And uh, I guess what color buttons? Maybe green. I think green. Green would be pretty cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.